What is up guys? I am the High Tech Redneck and this is the Donner Ultimate Comp Mini Compressor Pedal. And this is my review of it. <clears throat> I think this is a pretty awesome little pedal. Let's go over some of the features on this pedal. Now, um, according to the manual, <laughs> the features are, um, let's see here. Can you focus please? Features, entirely gaining and boosting the distortion degree of metal. Has the special and strong distortion effect. True bypass provides transparent tone. LED indicator shows the working state. Yes. Ultimate comp manual. Wow. Donner, that was really bad. You guys really need a translator. Please fix that. That's just, wow. Um, okay, so let's go over the real features of this. It comes in a cardboard box with a little magnetically attached flippy lid which is pretty cool and a foam insert it works great for transporting pedals to gigs and whatnot if you if you're that kind of guy um once again the manual is really dinky and weird um honestly i don't care that much because nobody reads the manual to be honest i mean we don't need it that much it's not a crucial part of the guitar pedal but really that that's bad it's pretty dinky the pedal is true bypass and I have checked it. It does function as a true bypass pedal. It, it it uses a standard 9 volt adapter, just like a boss pedal would. It has a rubber padded bottom, just like a boss pedal would. And it functions very well, just like a boss pedal's pad does. Um, it has a small uh, level knob and a tone knob and a large compression knob, or basically a ratio knob. And then we have a mode switch here, but switches between normal and treble modes. Um, yeah, the working current of this pedal is 12 milliamps, uh, according to the manual anyway. It has a 470 kiloohm input impedance and a 1 kiloohm output impedance, if any of you care. And those are the features. I give the features a 10 out of 10 on this compressor because it's everything I could ask for as long as they work right. So yeah, features 10 out of 10. Now let's move on to the construction. This pedal was put together fairly well. Everything was very snug and well fitted. All of the nuts and bolts and, you know, welding joints and all of those things. The structural integrity it is very good, as it were. Um, yeah, everything was well fitted. The rubber pad is good quality. The power jack, the quarter inch jacks, the mode switch, the foot switch, they are all awesome and super solid. It had, it, uh, when I got this pedal, however, it had a very small plastic burr on the underside of this plastic knob right here. So right over, if we can focus in on this, um, can we? I don't know, but right here, anyway, there was a little plastic burr there, and that burr rubbed against the body of the pedal and made the knob drag, and it made it feel like this was a defective pot, but it was not. And uh, at some point, it got much worse, and I decided to investigate. I pulled it off, and I found that burr, and I shaved it off with a pocket knife, and suddenly it was all fixed, and it works better. And now the dogs are going to bark and lose their minds. All right. Um, so, yeah, I shaved that off with a pocket knife, and uh, just a little tiny, tiny burr on the plastic from the finishing of the part, or from the, the lack of finishing on the part. Uh, caused that to rub and drag, but it was not necessarily a defective part. It did not, you know, it was not a part that was about to break or something. It was just a little burr of plastic, so that's not really a big deal. Um, yeah, let's see. Where was I? Where was I? So, yeah, we'll, we'll take something off for the fit and finish there, but it was a very, very minor defect, once again. It's not a problem. I give the, the parts and construction a 9 out of 10 because the pedal's great. And like I said, the defect was practically microscopic and it was not important to the function of the pedal. So let's go on to the sound. The pedal has a great tone. It has two great tones, as a matter of fact. It adds power and definition and clarity and punch into the tone all at once without making anything muddy or nasty sounding. It makes any guitar that I use it with instantly sound like it's worth $500 more and it uh it helps control the picking dynamics and the playing dynamics of the guitar so it makes me sound like a better player instantly as well if, if the compressor is set right um yeah it uh it controls the dynamics it helps make the playing more smooth and professional sounding it helps to balance the volume out between the strings if you have one string that's kind of quiet one that's too loud this will kind of balance that out 
It works wonders on clean sounds, which in turn affects all of the other effects that you might use it with in positive ways. It can really bring out the tone of your drive pedals, especially. So if you have like a blues driver and you think it's you know not quite the right tone you want, you wish it were brighter and more defined, get something like this. This may make that blues driver the perfect pedal for you all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, turning this pedal on along with a properly dialed in EQ will make you think that your amp has been stuck under a pile of old laundry for all these years and suddenly like you just removed all that laundry and you can hear the amp all of a sudden after, after all this time. That's what those two pedals sound like whenever you turn them on. It's amazing. Uh, the tone knob on this guy has lots of sweep and I really like that. Right here about 12 o'clock seems like a transparent tone. If I roll it higher, it seems to add highs into the mix and if I turn it lower, it, it reduces the low end of the sound which is really cool. The level knob is really nice. It seems to blend in well somewhere from about, you know, 9 o'clock up to 12 o'clock, depending on the settings, which is a really nice amount of sweep. I don't like volume knobs that have to be almost down to the bottom at some point where you practically have the thing shut off. Um, so, yeah, everything functions great. The sound is great. <clears throat> uh, let's see. There are good compression ratios on this pedal. It goes from nearly clean to very squishy. It is a very versatile pedal. And then we also have the two modes. We have the treble mode, which is, it seems smoother and more usable for the blues and certain kinds of music that I play, at least. And uh, it's a really beautiful compression. It has nice dynamics and nice clarity without too much craziness going on with the pick attack. And uh, yeah, it has lots of power and clarity when it's dialed in right. Um, the normal mode seems to have too much pop in the pick attack for my style. Uh, but it would be really good for funk. It would be good for like chicken picking country kind of licks. Um, yeah, it could be really useful, useful for vocals and other types of instruments as well. So both of those settings are very useful. They are... And they are also very versatile because that compression ratio knob does, you know, allows you to go through so many different ratios. It is very versatile. Um... So yeah, overall, I give the sound a 9 out of 10. I, I, I think I could probably get better compression from the compressors in Audacity, or if I wanted to go spend thousands of dollars, I could find one that was a 10 out of 10. This guy is a 9 out of 10, and it's 30 bucks. And a 9 out of 10 compared to the good ones, not 9 out of 10 compared to crap. So this is a really good compressor. I'm not going to say it's the best compressor pedal out there, but for the money, I think it could be the best compressor pedal out there. Um, I also think this pedal is more than good enough for my needs for my guitars. So, uh, yeah, let's go on to the function. The function of the pedal is flawless, aside from that little plastic burr that kind of made me worried at first, and I thought it was going to be like a bad problem and like a defective pedal, because I was like, ah, you know, it's from China, maybe it's really bad parts. But no, it was just a tiny little burr, nothing bad about it. It's buttery smooth and awesome, just like all the rest of the parts. Can't complain about that. <clears throat> so I give the pedal a 9 out of 10 for function the way I got it, and a 10 out of 10 for function after I figured it out. <laughs> but yeah, basically a 10 out of 10. All I would have had to do was grab this knob and slip it upwards just a little bit on the post, and then it would turn nicely. But I went ahead and shaved the burr off too, just, you know, because I'm that kind of guy. <clears throat> so yeah, basically 10 out of 10 pedal. It's great. If you guys are looking for a compressor pedal for your guitar, this could be the way to go for you. The two different modes give it lots of dynamics. I'm going to give you guys a demo of this with some testing kind of settings and then a little musical demo, hopefully. And I hope you guys have found this awesome and useful and, you know, entertaining. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I am the high-tech redneck, and that is traffic passing by my house constantly that you hear in the background. Sorry about that. Later. All right, let's start with another G chord here. I think you'll see that adds a lot of body to the sound, definitely.
right now we have many modes of compression we have my standard we can bring this way way up and you'll hear the noise floor come up as i do we have to turn the level down very very loud very compressed and it goes farther still extremely compressed kind of sound okay so now we have aside from that we have Our tone knob, a great tone knob. Right here, at 12 o'clock, it seems wide open. When you open this farther, it seems to add more high. When you drop it below 12 o'clock, it seems to add more bass. Or actually, it seems to take away the bass. I'm sorry, I mean, damn it. It seems to take away all of the highs and leave the bass. That's what I mean. So it'll work like a tone up on a guitar until 12 o'clock. And once you get to 12, it will start to add extra highs into the sound. I very much like this tone knob. Next, we have the mode switch. So this is on the normal, well, actually this is the treble mode. I'm sorry. And now whenever we switch to the normal mode, we get a different pick attack and a different sound. Okay, so <clears throat> there you go. I don't really like the extra poppy pick attack in this mode. I play really hard. I dig into those strings to get that extra, I don't know, that pop out of the strings naturally. That just always came naturally to me. So this is just too much pop. So yeah, this one is a little softer when I get crazy with the pick hand. banging on the strings there so yeah there's a good example if you play softly it's not not as big of a deal so yeah both very useful very musical modes let's get on to a little bit of a musical demo hopefully you guys enjoyed this later